Hello and welcome back to Star Stable. I'm here with uh, the clockmaker, Big Bonnie, because last time we went and um, found her and brought her back. And hopefully today we'll get to fix the broken clock. Let's see. Hello, Mira. Now, I've been up into the clock tower and taken a little look at the machinery. It's possible to fix it. In fact, for a champion such as myself, nothing is impossible. But just because it's possible doesn't mean it's easy. There's just one tiny little snag. When I fled Silverglade Village, I was so angry with myself that I threw all of my tools into the fountain. I forgot that I'd done that. I need them though, otherwise I can't do anything about that broken clock. I don't dare to move an inch outside my door. Imagine what would happen if someone recognized me. You though, my pedal, have freedom to roam around unchallenged. Nobody suspects you of anything. Ride over to the fountain and collect my precious tools. Ride, hurry. Okay, we get your precious tools. Um, I think the fountain's over here. Is it? Come on, yes. We get the tools. Yep, that's all the tools. Let's go back. I've got your tools. Oh, Mira, my tools, my precious tools. Thank you so much. But they're totally ruined. Oh, my goldfish, why? Why does this kind of baloney always happen to me? Me. Why me? Why? <coughs> you thump Big Bunny on the back. Mm, she gets a bit hysterical. Ooh. Okay. Even if my tools were repaired, it still would count for nothing. We need oil to lubricate the mechanisms. Actually, quite a lot of oil since it stood still for all these years. Who would even have any oil around these parts anyway? Nobody. No chance. Nobody say I. What? Steve? Oh yeah, he's probably got oil. But even so, dear Mira, it's still a road to nowhere. It'll never work. It's a pathway to defeat, a highway to fiasco. You want to try anyway? Oh, go ahead. If you want to fribble away your time, here's an empty oil bottle. Go and talk to Steve if you like. Okay, let's take the other one as well. Mm, what a disaster. Just as I thought I was going to be able to return to my regular old life, the wicked fingers of chance crush my dreams like crumbly little cookies. How can life be so hideous and unkind? My tools destroyed. If they can be repaired? Never. Impossible. How would that even work? It's over now, Mira. It's all over. Just let me slither back into that sack and you can take me back to the silo. Hmm? You want to have a go at repairing the tools? That'll only work when pigs fly, my treasure. Useless idea. What's that? You have friends who can help you? The blacksmith? Nah, he's very good, but not even his wonderful skilled hands could work the kind of magic we need here. Nah, nope. These things can't get any worse than they are now, so it doesn't matter whether you give it a try or not. You may as well, but don't be surprised if it doesn't work out. Okay, well let's go to the black blacksmith first, and I'm gonna call for pickup because I'm lazy. Conrad, we need your help. Greetings to you, Mira. Might I help you with something? Oh yes, you might. I need help. Repair the clockmaker's tools. These little bundles of nothing aren't really something I'd usually take a second look at, but because it's you and you're asking so nicely, I can make an exception. Anything for my friend Mira. It's not a simple project you're asking me to work on. In fact, it's probably the toughest thing you could ask a blacksmith to do, even a blacksmith as experienced as I. In order for me to even begin work on this mighty undertaking, I'll need your help. 
you need to find a special type of iron from the heart of Garnok, deep, deep down in the volcano which spray death and destruction all over Jovik. It's a perilous journey full of danger. You'll be away from the safe embrace of Jovik for quite some time. Worry not, little Mira, I'll help you. In that box over there by the house, there's a tent you can borrow for the journey. Fetch it and I can tell you more. Excuse me? Um, um, where's this tent? Oh, I think I see sparkles. So where do I go? Oops, there's a tree. What do I do? Excellent, you've got the tent. Good. Now listen carefully. Your journey to the heart of Garnog is going to take at least a month, and during that time you're not going to be able to see any of your friends or your horses. Horses are forbidden where you're going, so you're going to have to leave Angel Mist behind as well. A whole month without your friends or horses. It's a serious sacrifice, but I'm happy I can rely on you to see it through. So, Mera, are you ready to start your journey? Um, no? What, why do I have to leave my horse behind? Why can't Angie come? I don't want to go alone. I, I don't... Why? <laughs> I was just joking, Mira. Pulling your leg. Rattling, rattling your cage. What a completely word class joke. I don't just forge the best tools, I forge the best jokes as well. <laughs> Those tools were so easy to repair that I managed to fix the whole lot while you were rummaging around in that box over there. <laughs> what a totally outrageous joke I just released upon you. This joke is going to be talked about by, by my children and my children's children and my children's children's children. In a hundred years, they will still be talking about the funniest joke in the history of all Jorvik. Here are the tools, Mira. Give them to your friend, the clockmaker. Few oh, <laughs> well, I'm relieved. I'm relieved. I don't want to go anywhere without my horses. Oh, he's a jokester. Okay, let's go see Steve next. Okay, Steve, my man. Do you have some oil? Oil? Why, yes, I do indeed have some black gold right here. Ooh, good. Can I have some? You know there's oil in that, uh, that tank, right, Mira? Hmm? He thinks it's diesel? Nah, it's not that big a difference. One thing you should know about my diesel is that it's particularly oily diesel. So it'll, it'll work just as well. Trust me. Believe in Steve. All you need to do is take your bottle and fill it up on up. I'm sure you can do that yourself. Yes, I can. I'm very good at that. Um... Let's have a look at the Frisians, the new Frisians while we're here. Oh. Um, this one. Oh, look at that one, cute. Oh, look at this. I think they're all level 12. Yes, so I can't get one of them right now, but as soon as I hit level 12, I'm coming back for one. There we go, Steve. I've got the diesel. So there you go. Now you've got a full bottle of oil. Or diesel. Or, well, yeah, diesel oil. And so you have a full bottle of diesel oil, Amira. Hope it'll be of use. Take care. See ya. Okay, now we got both the tools and the oil, and we can go back to the clockmaker. Here we go. Let's see. Big Bunny, I've got it all. Oh, it all came to nothing, didn't it? Just as I predicted. A total disaster. Another disappointment. Another another tragic chapter in my heartbreaking story. If I want to see the tools, pff, nah, what difference would it make? What? Wait. 
They look like new. Have I been released from the claws of fate? Have the winds of my destiny finally changed? Yes, they have, my dear woman. Hmm. You've filled the bottle with oil? Oh, excellent. Maybe there's a chance the winds of love could change after all. Hmm. Do we fix the clock now? Now, maybe there's a chance for us after all, Mira. Now the hour is upon us. We're going to try to repair the clock. Yes! <laughs> I'm excited. It's a very serious defect, and if I wasn't such a master clockmaker, I would probably have forced, been forced to give up. But don't be afraid, young Mira. I shall give you all the knowledge you need to repair it. I, am I not doing it myself? Well, I'm sure you understand that it was a deeply troubling and emotional experience for me to come back to the scene of my own personal apocalypse, and I genuinely don't believe I'll ever be able to go there again. I was about to faint and fall down while I was up there. That could quite easily have been the end of me. Plummeting to an early grave. I can't go back, I won't go back, and I can't go back. I'd like very much for you to help me with this, Mira. Not for my sake, but for the sake of my sweet, sweet villagers. Don't leave them high and dry, forced to live every day in a meaningless, clockless life. You'll help me? Miraculously marvelous. Now, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. The most important thing is that you carry out the steps in the right order. If you do it right, the clock will tick once more. If you do it wrong, then you just need to cross your fingers that you've not flubbed and fumbled it too badly and come back to me so you can't have another try. Here's what you need to do. Step 1. Use the wrench on the wheel by the clock face. Step 2. Pour oil into the big funnel. Step 3. Use the clock winding key to wind up the spring. Step 4. Pull the lever to start the clock. Step 5. Cross your fingers. Step 6. There are no more steps. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Okay. Wrench, oil, winding key, and lever. Okay. Mm. Let's go to the clock tower. I'll just leave Angie here. There we go. Ooh, I can see through the walls again. Oh, <laughs> okay. So wrench on the clock face. Uh, I think it's here. Yep. And then we had oil and a funnel. Where is a funnel? Is this a funnel? Nope. Um, hmm. Is it up here? Here. Yeah. Okay. And then we use the clock winding key. I think that was down here. Yes. There we go. You've done your best. Pull the lever to start the clock and see if you've done it right. Um, which lever? Ah, oh, up here. I see. Yes. Come on. Oh, it's ticking. It's turning. I did it. Yes. Come on, Angie. We fixed the clock. Let's go tell Big Bonnie the good news. Hello. We did it. You've repaired the clock. Hooray, I've repaired the clock. Hooray for me. I'm a hero, a solid gold hero. I shan't forget you, Mira. When I'm awarded a medal, a medal of amazingness, I'll give you a special mention in my acceptance speech. Well, that's kind of you.
you know what? It it actually is quarter past nine right now. So either that <laughs> clock really works, or um, I just got lucky. <laughs> but yeah, it's quarter past nine in the morning. <laughs> Now, not to be too much of a big brash smarty pants, but I do rather believe that now I'll get both the medal and probably some flowers from the councilman. Maybe he'll even organize a parade or festival in my honor. I'm pretty certain he'll be doing that. I can see it now. Carnival a la Big Bunny. Oh, today is a wonderful, marvelous, magnificent day, my little Mira. Come on, let's go. Um... Oh, Big Bunny runs like the wind straight to the councilman. We better hurry up. She's fast. Okay. Oh, hello, Clockmaker Big Bunny. Not seen you for a while. Well, well, Big Bunny, nice to see you again. Listen, while you're here, do you think you could have a look at that broken clock? Nice one. Hmm? Oh, it's fixed already. Neat. Yep, well, excellent. Thanks for that. Now, you'll have to excuse me. I've got lots to be getting on with. Bye. Well, what did he say? He hasn't even noticed I've been away. Am I that insignificant? Am I not worth more than that? Oh, oh, poor Big Bunny. So, nobody's even noticed that I've been away for five years? This is horrendous. I'm worthless. A little, me, me, a little meaningless insect. An ant. A loose. A tiny beetle. I'm a pointless little cockroach. <laughs> Excuse me, Mira, I have to return to the silo and live out the rest of my pointless cockroachy days in sorrow and loneliness. Oh, I feel bad for her. Hi, Mira, can I help you with something? Why does Big Bonnie look so sad? What happened? What? Cockroach? Oh, now I understand. So she's lived in exile for years because she made a mistake that she thought would destroy the whole village. And now she's repaired the broken clock and thought she'd be carried through the streets in celebration. How should we go about fixing this mirror? Everyone has wristwatches and cell phones these days. There's nobody who really needs the town hall clock. It's mostly just nice to look at. Hmm? Well, we have to try and get Big Bonnie in a better mood, don't we, Mira? Let me have another word with her. Okay, please do. I feel bad for her. Clockmaker Big Bunny, please do excuse my earlier performance. You see, without the town hall clock to wake me every morning, I've slept so badly recently that I've basically turned into a zombie. I think that's why my reaction earlier was so, um, uh, casual. Now the news has had a chance to sink into my head. Not as sharp as I used to be, you see. What you have done is totally wonderful. Just think, when you left town, we were so completely furious and thoroughly disappointed in you, and we just couldn't understand how you could have left us with a broken clock. But after some time, we began to understand what a terribly difficult job you had, especially after each and every one of us tried to get up there and fix the clock, each one of us failing horribly. Now you're back, and in less than a day, you've got everything fixed. You're a true hero. As a thank you for your efforts, I hereby declare you silver clade clockmaker of the highest order. Clockmaker Big Bunny, thank you again. Please never leave the village again. We just couldn't survive without you. Okay, that's better. That's better. Oh, Mira, I absolutely knew it. Not to be big-headed, but like he said, without me, the village would never survive. That's it, decided. I'll never leave the village again. Never, ever. Thank you for all your help, Mira. Here's a lovely little thing for you as a token of my gratitude. Now, I have to get myself home again, because as I'm sure you understand, there's quite a lot of cleaning to do after five years in exile. Come and visit me should you ever find the time. Goodbye. Big Bunny disappears in the direction of her house to celebrate. I didn't see the rest of that. 
But let's have a look at the shirt. Oh, that's a nice red one. Do I have red gear on anybody? I don't think so. But one day. Oh, well, that's it for it. This week we fixed the clock. And uh, Big Bonnie's back in the village and she's here to stay and that's good. And uh, everybody's happy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.